I'm Dr. Allison Johnson, Doctor of Oriental Medicine, here with my friend Jean Collins, who promotes uh, young living and a healthy lifestyle. Welcome to our talk on how to detox the skin from the inside. And today's not going to be about, you know, detoxing your liver, or doing the master cleanse, or anything like that. We're going to talk about some very easy things you can add into your life to just start um, treating your body better, digesting better, and it will be reflected on your skin. So drinking water is really important. And you've probably heard this throughout your life and you've probably heard that, oh, eight, drink eight glasses of water a day. And the thing is that I found in my practice of Chinese medicine over the years working with patients is that people, sometimes they don't like drinking straight water. So there's some things to consider with that. And one of them is, are you drinking tap water? And unless you live on a really nice well in nature, um, you're not apt to have the best water because you're gonna have water that's been treated by the city. So what you can do is use things like Brita filters that you know go in the pitcher and stuff like that, which is typically a carbon filter. And other than that, you can get a reverse osmosis filter, which you can put under your sink. They're not all that expensive these days. They're pretty easy to install. And what you do want to have with that is something that adds the minerals back into the water because reverse osmosis will take the minerals out. In any case, maybe that's why you don't like drinking water. When we are drinking our water, so this is something that we should hopefully be drinking water every day, we could add items um, like digize or I really like peppermint, but do remember that one drop of peppermint is equal to 28 cups of peppermint tea, just to help with uh, detoxing and cleansing the skin. That's a quick tip that you can easily add into your life. If you're just considering like, maybe I'm not drinking enough water, what is enough water? What you can do is you can take your weight um, in pounds and divide by two, and that's how much water you should be drinking in ounces a day. So say I weigh um, 120 pounds, if I, that's an easy one to divide by two, then that means 60 ounces of water a day. If you divide that by eight, you know, like a typical eight ounce cup of water, then you can uh, figure out that that's about uh, seven to eight cups of water a day. So that is a good thing to go by in terms of how much water you should have just kind of to help your organs function and to help move things through your system properly. Water is very important. I've come across people who like don't even drink any water. You can get some water from your diet, but you do need to drink water on top of that. And Chinese medicine wise, we don't ever add ice to water. We always drink water at room temperature because the cold water is a little bit more of a shock for your organs to take. One of the reasons to add something like peppermint to your water, because peppermint's really cooling, adding that to your water, then you'll be um, helping cool down your body, but without the added ice. Because I do agree that ice, I usually drink water with no ice. I'd like to talk about um, keeping your gut bacteria happy. Now, this is probably something you've also heard of on the media, and thankfully it's out there more in the world today. And people like our grandparents didn't have to worry about this as much because they weren't living in a world where we were um, sanitizing everything. So there was no bacteria anywhere. They were, you know, rinsing off vegetables from their garden. They still got some soil microbes in there. Um, they weren't washing their hands as much. And it's not to say that those things are not good. It's just in the modern day where we're wiping out a lot of bacteria that otherwise would have been getting into us somehow. And we actually, we are mostly bacteria if you look at the trillions of human cells. And so what we need to do is to cultivate um, good bacteria in our guts. One thing we can add to our diet every day is to try to eat some fermented kinds of foods. And so often you'll see um, on a product such as kombucha or sauerkraut or um, even pickled things and, what, and yogurt, what you wanna look for is things like raw and active cultures, even apple cider vinegar. You wanna look for raw with the mother. So this raw idea is that it hasn't been heated to the extent that it's gonna kill off microorganisms. Instead, it's gonna maintain those microorganisms so that you can benefit from them and it will help your gut um, by helping cultivate those particular organisms and you're like cultivating this multi-faceted garden 
of like all these different organisms that are helping you have great digestion, not have bloating, have good bowel movements, um, have nice radiant skin, and they're digesting um, our vitamins and also doing things like that. So I wanna talk about kombucha. You may or may not like kombucha or the kind of kombucha you've had to this point, but Jean and I both um, grow the kombucha scoby and make kombucha tea at home. It's really, really easy. Um, and you can uh, follow the link below as to how to do that yourself if you'd like. And basically it's called a uh, SCOBY, which is symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. And scientists don't know really what it is other than that's what they've called it. And it's this awesome collection of a bunch of microbes that feed on um, sugar and tea, like from the tea plant, like that's uh, originated in China. Over time, these um, organisms eat up the sugar and they create this fermented tea, which you can see in Russian culture and different uh, Asian cultures that has been touted as this great health benefit, anti-disease kind of um, substance. And you can make it at home, which is the cheapest and easiest way to do it. And you can also add things to the kombucha after you've basically harvested it. So you've tasted it and it's at a nice uh, taste level to you. It's going to be more sour than sweet and it might even have a little bubbliness to it and then you can it can pour yourself a glass of that and then you can add juice to it or you can add essential oils and Jean was going to add some things about that. So I um, I love adding different things to my kombucha it's definitely more sour so we're like all right well let's let's either add the flavor to change it orange juice or sometimes even like uh, the lemonade with the kombucha and then you can add like ningxia red or even sparkling water and then uh, like citrus fresh or grapefruit vitality or lemon vitality so those are just different options to add and like we, all, we like different flavors it is really great for your gut health and your gut health is super important um, and yes i agree the microbiome and having those good cultures is very important. And you guys can easily look up microbiome and understand that we are mostly microbes and bacteria. We should have that good bacteria, that good health, and really understanding the products that we're using because we are kind of talking about the skin and, and what happens with acne and how that can get created kind of in any age. That can be created from poor diet. So that's why, again, the uh, fermentation and those items like sauerkraut or kombucha are very important but it can also be created from hormonal imbalances which again you can use essential oils for or the products that you're using to clean or the products you're putting on your skin like some of the makeup and the skincare products people are using it's not really helping the the skin it's more hurting it so just so you guys know those are some ideas and we also have life nine I forgot to grab it. It's in the fridge. <laughs> That's another reason why I also have a sticky note because uh, I don't see it. So I have a sticky note. So it helps me to realize, oh, I have to take my life nine. <laughs> but it's a great probiotics and it's uh, nine different strains of uh, probiotics. Um, and probiotics are really important because um, again, we live in a culture where we're, we're really um, sanitizing everything. We don't have a lot of good bacteria and we need to promote those uh, happy bacteria in our gut. If we don't promote the ones that are health promoting, which is what are in probiotics, then the ones that are disease causing will tend to like kind of take over. So they can be kind of latent in our body. These um, staphylococcus kind of bacteria or candida yeast and they're just hanging out in there and they're waiting for those good guys to kind of put down their weapons so that they can proliferate in the system and if those good guys are putting down their weapons or being less and less in number then those other ones are going to start to grow because they're not being checked and those are actually disease causing microorganisms so what we can do proactively is to eat more probiotic enhanced foods, which are like fermented or live foods, and take probiotics. In the modern day, we really do need to take them in addition to what we get in our diet. What I wanted to mention for essential oils using Digize um, essential oil, which is in the vitality line here of um, Young Living, 
uh, means you can take it internally. This one is a really great one for digestion. It comes in the premium starter kit, um, which you likely already have, and maybe you haven't d figured out how to use this essential oil yet. This is what it's for, really good for moving food through the digestive tract and just supporting overall great digestion, which is key. Digest isn't my favorite. I usually put like a shot glass of either almond milk or that Ningxia red because fennel and ginger and things like that. Just, it's not really my, my uh, flavor profile. I like more of the citrus oils, but it is, let me tell you, if I have a stomach issue or I'm noticing something and it's, I'm trying to get, move it through, you best believe digize is my first thing and the, or peppermint if but if digize or sometimes i'll use both because i'm just like in that much like oh my god what's happening like i can't i i yeah i got i gotta get this out and the digize um like Jean was saying you can either put it straight in water which i like personally but it does have things like it has ginger peppermint fennel anise and which is kind of a licorice type flavor as is fennel and patchouli in it. And so it does have a kind of a little more earthy, a little bit spicy kind of flavor. And it does pair very well with the almond milk and or something like that if you don't want to take it in water. In Chinese medicine, those herbs are all very good for your digestive health overall. They're just gonna promote easy, great digestion. How many times have we found ourselves going, oh, my stomach doesn't feel so good, I ate too much, or oh, that food doesn't really agree with me, or feeling bloated after meals, or feeling like you have acid regurgitation, or just feeling really stuck. That's the first part of your digestion is when it's getting in your stomach, the food and the water, the food and the drinks. So you really wanna help it there by taking something like the Digize on a daily basis to help it start its way down your digestive tract in a healthy uh, way. And the other thing we're wanting to mention is how to support the colon, uh, right? And did you wanna start with that? Sure, so uh, the next part of the digestive tract is gonna be your colon for the most part. I mean, it's gonna go, the food's gonna go from your stomach down through your small intestine where a lot of the vitamins are gonna be absorbed and then it's gonna go into your colon and still be extracting some uh, the waste products basically from your uh, what you've taken in. And part of supporting the movement through the colon is um, fiber, uh, both soluble and insoluble fiber. And again, most people don't get enough of this in their diet, and so it's no problem, you can add it. We've got a lot of great modern products that you can use to add that fiber. When you add fiber like a supplement to your diet, you absolutely need to drink water with it. Um, any of you who've taken something like psyllium husk, they always advise you have to take a lot of water with it because it basically absorbs the water and then it provides this bulk to move through your digestive tract. So that's very important. And what fiber does also is it provides what's called a prebiotic quality. So it's something that the probiotics like to eat as their food. They won't just eat anything. They're very adaptable, but you need to give them some good food to eat. And this is part of way to do it. And then they grow stronger and um, healthier in your gut. A few options from the world of Young Living and how to really help get those fibers and just help make sure that your gut health and your gut is moving through and you, that you are producing enough bowel movements. Um, a lot of the time that is what the issue is. Actually, I just remembered a story from Gary Young. This woman had brought her child and her child kept having these lesions on the skin and the doctors couldn't tell her what was wrong and, and anything. And he just asked, well, when was the last time the baby had a bowel movement? Two weeks. No wonder why it had lesions all over the skin and like, that's not healthy, especially for babies. And babies are actually the best way of like showing a bowel movement. Usually they, they eat and then like within 30 minutes, it's released. You know, and that just shows where our digestive system should be, at least two bowel movements a day. So if you're not experiencing that, the cleansing trio is one of the great ways of doing that. And the cleansing trio is made up of uh, comfort tone, essential zyme, and then ICP. And ICP um, is one of the 
one of the products that has the fibers, the insoluble and soluble fibers, and you just mix two teaspoons, rounded teaspoons with it. I did tablespoons the first time, and luckily I was good, but I like three or four days later, I was like, whoa, look, that's a lot. What happened there? <laughs> I was like, but even the next day I realized, I was like, oh, oh, teaspoons, not tablespoons. You can either do it in juice or water. I usually just do water. The other thing with ICP, you have to make sure that you drink it like right away. Because if you don't drink it right away, it'll just keep getting thicker. And then uh, you either have to use a spoon or start over. ICP is awesome. And that's more uh, to help get that colon and that stuff moving out of the system. And like I said, it has those fibers to, to be the pre prebiotic, right? And then Comfort Tone. Comfort Tone is awesome. Again, it's another colon focused product because we definitely want to cleanse the colon first before the liver. Comfort Tone and ICP again, clearing the colon. Now, essential sign. This one is you take it once with your largest meal before your largest meal. But honestly, just take it. If you've already eaten, just get it in your system. It's going to help. It has peppermint as the coated bio layer caplet, but it's a multi-enzyme blend and enzymes are just great to help with digestion because of the way our food system is. And that's why also gardening is good and just getting, um, doing the best to do local because that's going to help as well. But basically an enzyme is helping break down the food to extract the nutrients. So enzymes are important. Uh, we have different ones, but we're just going to focus on the cleansing trio if you do have any questions on the other enzymes, feel free to ask either Allison or myself and we'd be happy to connect with you because our information is below and also at the end. That trio that Young Living has created is really important for all the steps of digestion. So the enzymes to help in the stomach and small intestine and then the all the bulking agent, the fibers to help move through the colon and help sweep away debris and toxins and um, also the cascara sagrada which is in the other product in order to help just keep pur you know purging the colon out so what we're doing in this talk is we're going to talk about really how to optimize your digestive system as a means of detox because then you're moving things through you're extracting the proper nutrients from your food and then in the next talk we'll talk about then how to detoxify your liver and the thing about this is you're really setting yourself up for success if you cleanse out the digestive tract and get it flowing properly and then detoxify the liver in order to help detoxify the blood and help the skin even more, you're going to have much less side effects of detox, which perhaps you have had or have heard people have had in the past when they go directly toward detoxifying the liver. The problem there is that when they try to detoxify the liver before they detoxify and help the GI tract work better is that the toxins have nowhere to go. And especially if they're getting stuck in a, a stuck colon, then basically what happens like with this baby Jean mentioned is the toxins stay in the colon if there's no bowel movement and then they start to get reabsorbed back into the body. And then that's just a fruitless attempt of detoxifying. And then sometimes then people will have symptoms as those things retoxify the body basically. So make sure you follow the steps of what we're doing now. We're you know, cleansing and optimizing the digestive system, and then we can go on and cleanse the liver and have a really optimal effect. Basically, helping the skin from the inside out is reducing stress in your life. So there's a quality of eustress, right? Things that basically are a challenge for us, that life challenges us, and then we respond. And hopefully we respond better and better with the tools that we have. And then there's this concept of stress or strain where the person feels overwhelmed by those challenges of life and they don't know how to respond. And so it creates this kind of tension, uh, built up constant kind of static and tension in the person's life. And they not only experience it psychologically with their emotions and their thoughts, but also the body is taking a huge hit for this stress. And it's in what we call fight or flight. Um, constantly. Whereas in the past, in our time as hunters and gatherers, for instance, that fight or flight response is like, oh my gosh, there's a tiger, I need to run. And that was a very short period of time 
where that got mobilized in order to help that person run. And what it does is it shuts down the digestive system. It shuts down the things that that person doesn't need in order to run. So what they need in order to run is to be instantly alert, adrenals amped up, and blood to the muscles and run. And if we have that thing going on constantly in our body, it actually is a highly inflammatory process. And it's like the body's constantly on on. And it's very damaging to our organs and our system, and not only to our emotions and our thoughts as well. So what we need to do is figure out ways that we can actually reduce stress and actually get in it and do it. So I think we have this idea, this meme in culture, which is, oh yeah, we've got to reduce stress. But if we're doing yoga and by the at the same time all those stressful thoughts are still running through our mind and our body's still amped up then it's not helping so what are some things we can do what things create stress so there can be psychological stressors so that's often a self-induced um, by the way that we approach the world and we could have some different tools to work with that. Um, you can follow me on Immortal Beauty YouTube and Facebook if you'd like some ideas about how to work with that. There's environmental stressors, which are things like chemicals in the water, in the soil, in our cleaning products, all these kinds of things, stuff moving through the air. Um, and sleep deprivation is a really big one. So that's something, you know, we can have more dramatic effect at right now there's at least three or four points that you just mentioned where essential oils and essential oil infused products can really help reduce those stresses either by what you like the cleaning items these household cleaner cleans everything or i mean in your premium starter kit that you already have or if not you're getting today right and we're going to have stuff like, I mean, stress away, that blend is there, but there's other oils and then using even the digize and the peppermint to help cleanse the gut and the colon and to make sure that your elimination, the, the proper way of elimination is working. So therefore you don't have pimples or zits pop up because your digestive system is working. So that, I mean, because remember, there's also points on your face that for certain that will point to certain organs with reflexology especially in chinese medicine you, that awesome chart absolutely um yes so i wanted to go over um things that we could do to reduce stress and to help our sleep the sleep part um is really important so essential oils are incredibly helpful uh, we've talked about some in the past to calm down the um that kind of stress response things like frankincense, sandalwood, lavender, um, rose, et cetera. Um, there's so many, you can't even list how many there are um, to do that. So you, one could use those to help reduce the stress and help sleep better and get kind of calmed down for the evening. Um, also having device off time. So maybe there's even a day, imagine that, that you don't get on your devices at all, right? Um, what does that feel like? So those of us who grew up before cell phones, um, that was a different life, right? With a landline where you waited until you got home to check your messages and no one was, you weren't at everyone's beck and call or you couldn't look something up on your cell phone every, every second. Um, it's a wonderful thing. And on the other hand, it can be very distracting. And what people are plugging into via that are things that are often stress promoting, basically things that the news would promote or that you're seeing people arguing on Facebook or other things like that or posting nasty things to you. And it just gets people really riled up. So it's good to um, take some device off time. When you were mentioning about the different triggers of getting notifications and maybe you should also turn off those notifications or even have your cell phone ringer off uh, because that does produce that flight or fight response and if, if you're also realizing that you are in times of like you're like dude why haven't i gotten any projects done you know look back and see how many times you were distracted and maybe um figure out a time in your day when you do have your cell phone ringer off, maybe it's from 10 to four or 11 to four, I don't know, whatever is best for you. 
Uh, so yeah, those are just some ideas with like technology and making sure that um, that you're creating the environment and also just times away are great too, but like for a whole day, but if for whatever reason you think, wow, that's a lot, then maybe try some of those other things. Turn off the notifications. Put the phone on silent for hours at a time during the day. Another great thing to do is we're going to talk about how you can take um, relaxing baths with essential oils and Epsom salts and then also doing some self-massage with that. So let me just talk a little bit about the self-massage. So in Chinese medicine, you know, there are different acupressure points. Uh, in Chinese medicine, we use them as acupuncture, but it doesn't matter. You can just press on the points and uh, get help with them. So the two oils that I wanna recommend today is the Digize, which we took internally. You can also use this one externally, and then ginger, which we're gonna use externally. So maybe you're taking you know, three drops of each one. You can do it straight on your skin or you can put a slight carrier oil on it to help. And what you can do is basically you just put them in your hand, maybe you put them with the carrier oil and then just rub them you know, over, over your belly, over this whole area of the belly, okay? And then once you've got that going on, then let's look at some specific points. So this is your rib cage up here, okay, this, this triangle here that comes up here. So your ribs come up to this kind of point right here, okay, where it forms this kind of tent shape up in here. So we want to find where that point is and we want to find our belly button. And then halfway between those two things is a, is a special point for your stomach. And it may be a little bit tender. And so I like to use my middle finger to kind of massage because I can get a little more pressure going that way, but you do whatever works for you. If it's so tender, maybe you use like three fingers and you go pretty light and you just start to stimulate that. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever works well for you. And so that point is right there. And then the other points are gonna to be to the sides of the belly button. And so the way that you're gonna find that is find your belly button and then you're gonna come out um, to, there's gonna be a, what's called the rectus abdominis on the side here. So if you come from the side of your abdomen into the rectus abdominis is the one where you see the six pack right here, goes, it's a very large area. Um, so you come from the side and you feel where its edge is and then there's your belly button and then you go halfway. And that's this point that we're looking at here Otherwise, you can find your belly button and go three of your fingers out to the side. And these points are on the two sides. And these ones are for the large intestine specifically. And so those will help optimize digestion and move the bowel movement. You can massage them anytime you want to, especially if they're tender, they need to be massaged. And look at how your digestion changes, especially if you're gonna use the essential oils um, locally on that area as well. It's going to be so helpful. Um, Jean, you have some tips about uh, using Epsom salts and essential oils. Yes, I do. I, I do have some tips you know, with the essential oils and the Epsom salt bath. It's just adding some Epsom salt and empty essential oil bottles. So when you're em picking out your empty essential oil bottles, you want to make sure that you're, there are some ideas of um, Obviously, I will add more Epsom salt, but making sure that those essential oil empty bottles are not all hot oils, like oregano, thyme, peppermint, cinnamon, ginger, all of those are hot oils. I once put, I was having some uh, gastrointestinal issues when I was in China and I had some oregano essential oil with me and I was like, oh, I'm just going to put this on my stomach. Oh my goodness. Yes, it's very stimulating. Even though I put it in carrier oil, I use too much. So um, it can be very spicy to the skin, and although very helpful. And so things like those kind of essential oils or things like peppermint too. So if you think of menthol that's in a lot of like body rubs, Bengay, that kind of stuff, it has that burny kind of effect or cayenne pepper has that same effect. And it's good for sore muscles, but when you're gonna submerge yourself in a bath, your mucous membranes are gonna be exposed to the to these essential oils and so you just want to make sure there's not too many of them in there and what they do is they mess with the uh, just your skin in general so what i do is i i'll take the, an empty bottle and i'll make sure that 
let's see if you can see that that clear orifice is out yeah you can kind of see that clear orifice and i'll just take all three of these parts with you know the label and everything and i'll throw them in the bottle um and then i'll add a little bit more epsom salt and right now that was stress away so that was an old bottle of stress away but what's happening is like i can still smell this now there's no drops there's nothing coming out because it's technically it's empty right but it's really not because there's still stuff on the side of the bottle. So one of the ways, there's a few different ways that people have figured out to get that last bit out is taking the empty bottles and putting it in. And I picked four bottles for this one. Um, I did Balor and Stress Away, which are in your premium starter kit. Those are just items to just help you reduce stress. All of those are stress reducing essential oils, but really, most essential oils have more than one use so you can really use anything you choose but remember the thing to remember is if for whatever reason you do have a whole bunch of hot oils then then you want to add uh, a drop of lavender add a drop of lavender add some geranium some ylang ylang and mostly the flower oils aren't hot or spicy they just are stronger in their sense one thing i just want to mention I also have Dr. Teal's, and uh, that's I get them at Costco because there's two of them for like seven bucks or something, and they're these nice big bags. And most uh, most Epsom salt things will tell you, oh, put two cups into your bath. I would recommend putting about half a bag myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, the yeah, the magnesium is something that we really um, are deficient in in our modern life and through the skin is actually a really great way to absorb magnesium and instead of through the gut, which we can do too, but through the skin is really easy. And the Epsom salt, the magnesium sulfate is super relaxing to the muscles. It's so nice at the end of the day. And it really just helps uh, decompress you in order to help uh, wash off the day and go to sleep. Yeah, I had to do that yesterday with uh, planting all the plants in the new greenhouse. And just, uh, I, I did, I got it all done, but I was like, I need a bath. And so I used my little Epsom salts and uh, essential oil bottles. And these bottles are fine to be in there. Um, I usually just put them in when, once the water is full. And then I just, you can just throw some water on you. But it's it's great. It's an awesome way to just relax and help with those to uh, soothing those muscles from, from a hard day's work. So yeah. So now that you have found out some great tips on helping to make sure that the colon is really in, in the right em elimination process to get that all all of those toxins out and really absorb the right nutrients so that our skin can stay clear. We remember we were talking about using oils from the premium starter kit, which you probably already have, but if not, you can use the links below to get your premium starter kit today. And it's great to also know that there are some supplements and those supplements are infused with essential oils. And when, when they're infused with those essential oils, because essential oils help on a cellular level, they help get those nutrients into our system quicker, which is why I love the Young Living supplements. I'm, I'm getting all the nutrients from the supplement. It's really absorbing into my body and it's absorbing at a great level. So I also love the Cleansing Trio. I've been doing the Cleansing Trio and I found that I have more energy, more focus, um, and I've, I've found that sometimes and with releasing those toxins, you just help uplift your body more. I'm looking forward to helping you. And I know Allison is too. We're both looking forward to helping you on your Young Living journey. And make sure you add those supplements or some of these essential oils to your essential rewards order. And let's, let's have a conversation. Have a beautiful day. Wonderful. Thanks, Jean. And um, you can follow me on Immortal Beauty, either on Facebook or on YouTube for more tips on staying vital and beautiful and radiant longer and longer. You can start at any age. So great to see you guys today. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Our information is going to be right after this on the slide. And then you can also look below for links. You can find me on my, my YouTube channel, Jean Collins. 
and I look forward to connecting with you on Instagram, Facebook, and all those beautiful things. Have a great one. Bye-bye.